Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about object tracking via CamShift which is a modified version of the MinShift algorithm. It's called Continuously Adaptive MinShift or CamShift algorithm. And this um, CamShift algorithm, the advantage it has over MinShift is that in MinShift the window around the object to be tracked does not rotate, does not resize. Does not get resized so as the object gets closer to the camera to the viewer or further away and it rotates in the scene it, the uh, window around it the location of it is not easy to track and it loses the accuracy but in camshift it does the window the area around the target gets updated in size and uh, also orientation and this method is developed by OpenCV Labs and is free to use. So here what I did is I uh, moved an object in front of the webcam. I made a video. I took two frames of that that you're going to see. It's me holding a picture of uh, a 3D printed object that some of my students gave me as a gift, which is uh, for my uh, channel, Engineering Education Academy, with the sign of YouTube. And I move it in front of the camera and then my goal is to find, I give the location of that or a window around it in the first frame and I want to use cam shift to find it in the second frame. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is before anything else, I want to show you how the first frame looks like and then we go about the tracking part of it. So this is what we have. Okay, this is me holding this object. As I said, they printed it for me. And uh, here is a window that I defined around it. It's not perfect, but that's good enough. And uh, I found these uh, coordinates using the pyplotlib show that when you move your um, cursor at different location, it gives you pixel locations. The IM show command in OpenCV, as you can see, there is no coordinate here, but if you use the IM show command in pyplotlib, when you move your cursor over different locations, it gives you pixel coordinates. So I could find the um, top left corner of that window and the width and the height of it, and I provided it here, and I also defined it as a track window. And then I drew a green rectangle around it, as you can see here, and show it now what I do I go ahead and define that portion of frame one. I call it ROI or region of interest. And then I convert it into HSV color space. Why HSV? Because here my goal is to look in the red areas. So I want to look for the red areas and limit it into red channel. Although you might say, well, maybe I can find it with limiting the RGB values. Yes, you probably can. But since this is kind of uniform, mostly uniform red, except for this uh, triangle, I would rather limit it in the HSV color space. But remember, you can also uh, make a mask for this in the uh, RGB. So in order to do that, I use the command in range. And here I pass to it the HSV color space. And then I use two upper and lower limits. So this is the lower limit here. When I say the hue is from 170 all the way to 180, the saturation is from 100 to 255, and the value is from 155 to 255. That gives me a mask of that YouTube block that I can track. Okay, so let me show you that mask. It's not perfect. I can improve it, but for the sake of this algorithm, it's good enough. Okay, so this is the mask of that. Clearly, these written areas that are black are excluded, the white area is excluded, and these areas are excluded. The only reason is here there is a little bit of shadow on them or darkness. Now, I can play with the parameters and probably uh, bring these areas. It has the chance of bringing more extra uh, pixels around the, fore around the background and add it to this which is not really going to be major, but I guess this gives me enough of pixels in this object to create an effective histogram. 
So I don't need to do any further binary operation on this. Otherwise, I could probably use the dilation method or the closing method and close lots of these holes in it and make it even better and better. Right, but here I want to uh, apply a cam shift without all of those, see if it works, and the fact is it does. Okay, so as long as you have uh, covered a bunch of these pixels, uh, you should be good to go. So here, that's my mask. Then, now I create the histogram of the region of interest using the calc hist command. I pass to it the uh, HSV region of interest, right? And then, uh, which is the HSV of the region of interest, I say which channels, how many channels to use, I give it the mask, I give it the number of bins, and I give it the range of the values here. Okay, and then here I'm only looking at the hue channel right now. And hue channel, if you remember from one of my previous videos when I used the sliders, it goes from 0 to 180, and here for each one unit, I create one bin. So um, uh, this is my hue channel and I only use uh, basically channel zero, right, which is hue here in this case. And the next thing I do, I normalize it so it can be properly used for the back uh, histogram back projection. So here I normalize it to the range zero to 255 and write it back to itself. So this is the input, this is the output, this is the min and max of the range instead of 0 to 180. I normalize it to 0 to 255. Okay, and then what I will do is um, here I now read my second frame, convert it to again HSV color space. Then what do I do? I give this uh, HSV version of what? Of my um, second frame, I give that to the calc back project, which is histogram back projection method. I give that entire HSV image to this method. I say only use the hue color, the hue channel and look for this region of interest histogram that I have generated and normalized. And make sure that the hue values you're looking for are from 0 to 180. And the last uh, arg argument or input here is called the scale of the output back, propagation, uh, back projection. This back projection and histogram back projection is uh, basically it has its own explanation and it needs maybe a mini lecture of a mini video of its own for me to explain what this one does but the idea here is if i want to put it very simply is i provided a window here right and i said go into that window with the mask i gave you Look at all the pixels, which were all of those red pixels. Find the histogram of different uh, values. Now, go to what? Go to the new image. Look at the hue channel. And then, for each pixel in the target image, in the new image, in the second frame, give me a probability that that pixel belongs to this normalized histogram of the target. So it goes to the second frame and probably it finds the same object that I'm moving, that printed YouTube block. And those have similar red values and similar histograms to this histogram that my block does. And so they have high probability of belonging to that block. And then everywhere else, probably my face, the background and so on, they don't have a similar histogram. So they will have low probability of belonging to that red block. So that's what this guy does. Okay? So it gives you an image of probabilities that each pixel in the new frame belongs to the histogram of the target. That's what this guy does. And then you pass to it this uh, probability image. You pass that to the camshift algorithm and camshift is an iterative algorithm, so it keeps removing your uh, 
window in the first frame, the window around the target, it keeps moving it in the second frame until it reaches to a location and orientation and a scale that gives it the highest probability of matching what? Uh, the original histogram. So what you need to pass to it is what? You need to pass to it the uh, probability image from the second frame, the track window from the first frame, so it starts its search from there and continuously move it, resize it, rotate it until something happens. It's an iterative algorithm, so you need to have a termination criterion. And here the termination criterion is OR of two things. One is the epsilon term criteria, and the other one is count term criteria. And count is for basically the number of iterations in the algorithm that have passed so far, and epsilon is for the change in the location of the window. So it says if your window has at least moved 13 pixels from where you started, which is here, to its current location, or uh, five, sorry, or you have what, 13, you have gone through 13 iterations, then you can stop it. If you stop it too early and you don't allow a uh, basically large enough number for the movement, then you might not exactly stop where the object belongs. And I'll show you that by changing these numbers. So here, if those any of those conditions satisfied, go ahead and what? Stop it, and it does. And what does it give you? It gives you the new location of the window around the object, okay? And those four coordinates, and it gives you a rotated rectangle. And this rotated rectangle has a center uh, width and height and an angle. So instead of drawing a rotated rectangle here, I use the polygon polyline command and I draw a polyline which in this case because it only has four corners it is going to be a rotated rectangle but uh, as I said the rotated rectangle does not have the four corners it has the center width and height so before that I pass it to the box point commands I talked about this in one of my previous videos so you first pass it in advanced binary operations you pass it to the box point this guy will give you the four corners but those corners are not necessarily integers, they have decimals. So you first convert them into integers, and then you say on the new frame, go ahead and with these four corners, draw a rotated, what? Rectangle or a polyline with the color blue and with two units thickness and call it frame two and the object to be tracked. Okay, so that's what we are doing all over here. And let me run it and show it to you. There we go. Okay, so that was the mask. This is frame one and this is frame two. As you can see, the window is bigger. As you can see, the window is rotated. And to a very good extent, it contains the object for me, right? You clearly see it has moved. It has come closer, so it's bigger. It has rotated a little bit. And the object is well tracked with the window. Now, the better you make that mask, the better the object fits within the window and your window has less of these background pixels, the more accurate your algorithm can find the new location. But as I said, you also need to give it enough of iterations to pass, okay? So if I go ahead and change here the number of iterations, so you see it's 13. If I just make it four iterations, look what happens. Well, it's not too bad, but now if I make it like two iterations, you see it's a little bit off, right? And the same thing with the threshold. So if I say, hey, just move by two stop it look now again it kind of has that offset so you need to make sure these parameters are what these parameters are big enough that they allow look at this you see 
Now it has not even converged to the new location. It's completely off. So if I were you, I would allow it to have enough of iterations and at least move a minimum number of pixels before I declare it as the new position. So this is our um, cam shift algorithm and hopefully it was useful to you. So I'll see you in my next lecture. Thank you.